Hello world, and welcome back to The Glenn Alex Show. I hope you enjoyed this episode of The Glenn Alex Show on chronic pain with Frank Titus. Welcome to The Glenn Alex Show. Hi, I'm Glenn Alex, licensed clinical social worker, the wealth counselor, and author of Living in Total Health, the 2021 Indie Book Award winner for health and wellness and finalist in the mind, body, spirit category. My life's work is about total health, and I am on a mission to help as many people as I can be joyful, connected, confident, and complete. The life experience we call wealth, W-E-L-L-T-H, which is health plus other riches. And I am convinced that those who are in pursuit of and living in total health on the physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual levels will end wars, will end isms, and will end oppression in all of its forms. So we can make this world so much better for all of us. We can do this. On each episode of the Glenn Alex Show, we focus on a different aspect of health. And for this episode, we're going to talk about chronic pain because so many American adults are experiencing it and having a diminished quality of life as a result. So please help me welcome my guest, founder of Titus Motion Therapy, Frank Titus. Hi, Frank. Hi, good afternoon. Good afternoon, how are you doing? I'm doing very well. I'm on my sailboat today, so all is amazing. Nice, nice, I hope it's warm weather. It is, it's a beautiful day here in Southern California. Oh, excellent, excellent. Well, thank you for taking time to, to be with us today. Thank you for having me. It's my pleasure. Well, just take a minute and just introduce yourself. Tell us who you are and what you do. Well, as you said, I'm Frank Titus. I'm a founder, creator of uh, Titus Motion Therapy. And I started this journey many years ago, but that would take too long. So I've been around for uh, doing Titus Motion Therapy for almost 30 years. And I, um, I have a 95% success rate of keeping people out of surgery that are scheduled for surgery. And right now I do it all virtually. Okay. And how long have you been doing it virtually? Almost 30 years. Oh, really? I, I started with uh, VHS tapes and one of my first patients was in New Zealand. So I would send back and forth VHS tapes. And then I was on Skype before, you know, at the beginning of that. So I've been thinking about this for a long time. Oh, okay. Okay. So what, what led you into this, this form of healthcare? My own aches and pains. I had a uh, paralysis from the waist down for about four hours one time and got interested in chiropractic because that kind of helped me and physical therapy because that kind of helped me. And then after college, I, was accepted to both PT school and chiropractic school, and I didn't know what I was going to do. And I started with a guy named Pete Goscu in San Diego. And after three years, there's a lot of things I wanted to change about it. So I started my own practice. And my practice is different because it integrates more movement re-education rather than just postural. Postural is important, but you also need to move the correct way as well. Okay. Well, Explain that um, exactly. What does movement do that postural shifts don't? Well, for instance, your shoulders could be level and kind of in the right place, but they're probably still rounded a little bit. And once you straighten everything up, now I'm just using shoulder as an example because you could see it. The the shoulder is a very complex joint. You know, you do this and you do this and you do this, this, this all these different things. So all of those uh, movement patterns need to be re-educated. Now they're in the right spot, but they need to be re-educated as to how to move in a kinesthetic chain uh, correctly. Or if you're just addressing the posture, the dysfunctional posture can come back pretty quickly. Okay, okay. So are you speaking specifically about articulation? The way yeah. the bones move in the joint yes i call it kinesthetic chain because you know when you take a step with your left foot your right arm swings 
right? So there's a flow and a movement pattern that is supposed to happen. And okay. just getting an adjustment or just correcting the posture doesn't re-educate the movement patterns. You have to oh. neurologically, you know, kinesthetically change those movement patterns or it'll go back pretty quickly. Interesting, interesting. So do you have a, 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 a protocol or a set approach to your, your patients or do you individualize every case? Everything is individualized. Okay. Uh, if you want, you know, to get well, you need individual care because your body doesn't look like my body. Mine doesn't look like my grandma's or my son's. So everybody needs to be addressed individually and figure out what's tight and what's weak and address that and then address how to change the movement pattern. Okay. Well, my work is all about total health and the whole person. Yes. So do you, do you take into account um, your patients, um, not only their finances, their lifestyle, their activity level, their nutrition? Yes, is the answer. <laughs> Uh, nutrition, I do, because, you know, again, every individual is different. When you're evaluating them every week, and especially initially, some people need a hug, you know, some people need a nudge, uh, and, and that might change throughout the whole process. And I typically only see people once a week for eight weeks. They have the tools that they need to keep themselves well which is, you know, it's not a great business plan because I need new people all the time. <laughs> yes. Whereas, you know, people that do pain management, they're just managing your pain. I mean, do you want to manage the brake problem on your car? Probably not. Okay. Well, well, it sounds like not only do you individualize patient care, you individualize each session. Yes. The mental aspect is very important. Like I said, some people really need They've been through so much that they need a lot of support, uh, mentally, physically, um, and you, you put up financially. I worked on a gentleman in India years ago, and he couldn't afford to pay me. He couldn't get a job, and he was a friend of a, a patient here in town, and so I didn't charge him. He sent me a check for the full amount four years later. Mm. Right? That's awesome. So, it really is awesome. I mean, there are kind, <laughs> honest people out there. It's you know, it's not easy to find them all the time. But they're out there. I, I believe that. I absolutely do believe that. Like Mister Rogers said, find the helpers. Yes. Yes. I love it. Well, you you mentioned um, attitude. Um, yeah. How important would you say mindset is for the healing process? It's crucial. It's crucial. I think it's it's more crucial than the physical aspect. Meaning, I've been to ranger school, and you get to a a point where you think, "Oh my gosh, I can't go any further." But if you get your mind right, you actually can't. I think literally everything physical is about seventy percent mental. Wow. Okay. Okay, I, I too think. You know, a, good, a good saying, I love the um, saying of um, Henry Ford. He says, whether you say you can or you can't, you're, you're right. always right. right? Yes, yes. I, I totally um, agree with that. So what um, do you do to help your patients reset or firm up their mindset so they can heal faster or better? Well, kind of like what I said some people need nurturing some people need to push some people need to you know i've had people break down and get mad at me before and then they'll come back and say okay you're right <laughs> and, and we'll get through the process but uh it's not always easy and i think the line to you know health is not like this it's like this right because like you said Everything needs to be addressed. You can't just do this. You have to get out there and move and realize, you know, that you can do things. My, you know, what motivates me more than anything is the number one thing people tell me, patients tell me, is that I gave them their hope back. Mm -hmm. And that is so powerful. 
Like yeah. I'm so blessed to wake up every day and to be able to do that. Yes, that's that's awesome. And thank you for for your work with helping people be hopeful and to heal. And one of the more frustrating things for me in our society is we always look for that one size fits all magic bullet. Right. right. It doesn't exist. And people no. continue to look for it, spend the billions of dollars chasing it. Yep. And it's just not there. Yes, it, it happens all the time with me. And even like the financial aspect, some people will say, well, it costs too much. And I'm like, what does it cost to be pain-free in eight weeks? Like, I'm not charging you that much. How much have you spent on adjustments or massages over the last five years? I'm not charging you that much. Well, and, and medication and time off from work. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. That's a whole other aspect, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, wow. You mentioned earlier about pain management. Yes. What, what are the What are the shortfalls of just taking medication or or the other aspects of just pure pain management? Well, pain, like I said, I you know, you're going to take your car to the mechanic and say, my brakes, I need new brakes. And it's like, okay, fixes it, da, 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 da gives it to you and he said well you know you're gonna have to bring that thing back in every couple weeks to get it readjusted like that's just silly and if you're not going to treat you don't treat your car like that why do you treat this machine like that like this is the greatest machine on the planet right and it works 24 hours a day seven days a week for 70 some odd years i mean it has breakdowns here and there but wow yeah yeah. <laughs> I don't know if I answered your question. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, you did. You did. You're just preaching to the choir, so I get caught up listening. Okay. So <laughs> it, it, it doesn't make sense to continue to treat other machines better than we treat our own bodies and our own right. minds. And the opioid thing, you're just masking what's going on. And when I work with people, uh, if they have to take medication, I tell them to take it after the routine if they need it not during not before i guess not before they're not going to do it during but not before because i don't want anything that i do to create a bigger symptom or increase the symptom right and they're not going to know that if they take an opioid before i start treating them so that's how i kind of handle it and most people you know get off of their medication really within a couple weeks and, and the medication would, I, I would think, would mask. Yes, what that's, their, a, yes. that's another so, great example because I also tell people, like, you're going to be feeling better. This is kind of a similar what you're talking about. You're going to be feeling better, but these are all new ranges of motion. So don't overdo it because you're feeling better. And the mm-hmm. same thing with, with medication. You know, if people have to get a cortisone shot for their back pain, I say, okay, but just because you're feeling better doesn't mean that the machine is working better. It just means you've numbed it. Yes. Feeling better does not equate with getting better. Oh, that's a good one. (laughs) That should be your logo at the top. (laughs) I'll I'll take that under advisement. Thank well, you. It, you know, with all of your knowledge and background and your your group here, I would love to work with any of you all because I can do it all virtually. There's no hands-on and there's no equipment used. People, if they have a chair and a belt and a pillow, they can do almost all the exercises. I have about 450 exercises that I pick and choose from for different people. Wow. Um, and, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I will definitely, definitely spread the word for you. Now, you. let's take a, a just another look at uh, individuality. Yes. So if you have two patients, same age, same physique, and they're both having lower back pain, say on the right side, that doesn't mean their root cause or the issue is the same. No, how I tell people um, how what I do is different than other treatment plans or methods is that if I put a rock in your shoe and I say, let's go for a walk. By the time you get to the front door, 
you're gonna say, "Wow, this is really I gotta get this fucking be like, let's just do it. Because that's what most of us do, right? We're like, oh, you know, it'll work itself out. But by the time you get back from the walk, let's say you have low back pain. You're like, Frank, I have low back pain. I'm like, go get it treated. You go to the chiropractor, massage therapist, or even the doctor, surgeon, whatever, and you walk in and you say, My back is killing me. What are they gonna work on? Your back. I'm going to get the rock out of your shoe because that <laughs> okay. will cause the problem. Cause. Okay. Right. Okay. So, you know, nobody looks exactly the same. I mean, I've worked on professional athletes and they look very similar, but no one is the same. Okay. And because so, like in you said, you know, that everybody has a different, you might have different financial, mental, you know, all kinds of different other things. It's not just how they look. Okay. Well, can you just give us an um, overview of what your intake process is like? So you, where you discern the individual needs and characteristics of each patient? Yes. So I have them fill out a, a medical history form. So I evaluate the symptoms and the level of the symptoms is very important. And their, obviously their background, their age, their health history, uh, medication, mental aspect, and then I look at their posture, all four sides of their posture. And then I watch them, their gait pattern. I watch them walk back and forth. And then I decide what to do. And so things are not only individualized like week one, but it's every single week. And it's every single in that routine, everything is individualized. Okay. Okay. And what impact does... Um the cause of the pain have if it's if it's uh, poor posture or if it's caused by injury or caused post-surgery does that change how you approach your patient a little bit not much because i'm just looking at their alignment um initially and their gait pattern but initially you can look at people's posture and tell what's tight and weak now, of course, depending on the trauma, uh, mental and physical. So depending on those things, you're going to individualize each routine um, in a certain order. And you're going to individualize it, how aggressive and what the, how to get to their health and what they want out of it, right? Some people want to just be able to play with their kids. Other people want to be able to hike, you know, Kilimanjaro. <laughs> okay. Okay. And that speaks to their own individual quality of life. Right. And you have to figure out how to fit this into their life. Like, how do you fit in brushing your teeth kind of thing, right? Okay. I don't want to give somebody 30 minutes of stuff to do if they really only have 15 minutes a day. Okay. That makes sense. So yeah, because otherwise they're not going to do it, right? Right. And and how does age factor into your treatment? The average age of my patient is 50 years old, and it's about 50-50 men and women. I have seen 4-year-olds, and I have seen 94-year-olds. So wow. as, as we get older, you know, I would say the thing about getting older is it takes, you have to go slower because it takes longer to recover for things, right? You know, if right. you're 20 and a professional athlete, you know, you can boom, boom, boom. But if you're 60 and you want to go golfing and, you know, you're, you have sciatic pain, you have to go a little slower and, and modify things. I, I would just say the recovery rate and the, the rate of um, wellness just slows down a bit. Okay. Now, there's all this talk about as we age, and I really don't like to use the A word or the O word, <laughs> but as time passes, there's all this talk about you're less likely to heal. Are you yeah. not finding that? You finding that people are still healing up yeah. in age? It just takes yeah. a little longer. Yes, yes. That's I, interesting. I think that, you know, I don't know that your muscles really know how old you are, but 
they just need to function the same way. I mean, it doesn't change the muscular function. You know, your bicep's still supposed to do this, whether yes. you're 10 or 60, right? Okay. So you just look at the people's posture and their gait pattern. People literally will test me too. Like, oh, you can't, you can't figure out just from watching somebody walk. I go, when the next waiter walks by, I'll tell you what's hurting and then you can ask them. And <laughs> it's right every time. <laughs> okay. Okay. Very cool. I, I love amazing yeah. to, to be able to do that. Yeah. And I love that you have the, the, you have the mindset that you can still heal as you age. Right. I, as a health professional, isn't our goal to get people well? Our goal shouldn't be to work on them. It should be it's, to get them well. It's supposed to be. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Yes, it is. Yeah. I, think, I think back, I read a thing back in China. I don't think it still counts. Maybe it does. But Chinese doctors did not get paid unless their patients were well. Yes. Now, yes. isn't that a great way to do it. Yes, I've heard that you too, actually. Part the, you think you're part of the mechanic, you don't pay him if it's not fixed. <laughs> right? That would, that would totally incentivize and shift the practice of medicine. Right. Yeah. Right. And I don't even like the word practice. Just get it done. <laughs> well, they are practicing, so. <laughs> uh, they're still practicing. My goodness. They are. They are. So are, are there any other traditional treatments other than just medication that don't uh, work as well as the motion therapy? Everything. <laughs> I'm, kidding. I'm kidding. But, you know, things like back surgery are really only around 50% successful. Um, Still. And Yeah, and that's a problem. I worked on a, a surgeon and he said that that neck surgery is actually only about 30 percent successful and he said that the last thing he would have any of his family do is get surgery so it should be the last thing that people do and you know medication only if you need it but when they give medication they'll give you like a 90-day supply and then you're addicted you know yeah i like i said i have a 95 percent success rate of keeping people out of surgery that are scheduled for surgery and that includes okay. knees and and back and carpal tunnel and rotator cuff tears. It's it's been such an amazing trip for me to be able to do this. Okay, oh, that's amazing. That is Thank really you. amazing. And I I would love for more people to to take this approach yeah. to chronic pain and muscular uh, joint dysfunction than do the more aggressive stuff first. Well, and, you know, when I look at people, it doesn't matter if they have neck pain or knee pain. If I just get things working right, both is going to go away, right? Because everything just starts working correctly. So you can't just work on the symptom. Like if your knee hurts, it might be the opposite hip that's elevated. Rather yes. than, you know, now everything's symptom-oriented. You don't see the... You go see a back guy, you don't see that guy for your shoulder problem or your knee problem. That's just right. kind of kooky to me because everything's connected. Like I said, you take a step with the left foot, your right arm swings. It's connected. Yeah. And, and the body has a great way of resetting itself when it's given the proper tools. Yes? Yes. Yes. The body's mind-blowing to me. I just... I get so excited about talking about it. Hydration, we haven't talked about. That's a huge deal. Okay. You want to expand on that? Well, your body is two-thirds water, mm -hmm. right? So even if you blink your eye, you just used water. If you have a thought, you just used water. The okay. driest spot on your body is your teeth. It's 7% water. So you really need a lot of water. You can live three minutes without oxygen, three days without water, and 30 days without food. So water is 10 times more important than food. Hmm. <laughs> That's not my experience of hunger. <laughs> well, yeah, you know. 
It's not, it's, not, okay. it's not easy. I had to set an alarm on my phone, and so every hour, it alarm goes off, and I get up and drink a glass of water. Also, I read if you drink a glass of water before you go to sleep at night, you have a 50% less chance of having a heart attack. Really? Isn't that amazing? That is amazing. That is amazing. I actually keep a glass of water bedside, so I can take sips throughout the night if I felt the need to. Yeah, yeah, that's great. But okay. if you find yourself thirsty, you're already really dehydrated because that's that engine lights coming on and saying, dude, give it, give it to me. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I mean, I do believe hydration and nutrition are, are important. I just didn't realize right. it was that important in your work. Well, it's important in life. Okay. You know, like my, you know, the wheel of health, I'm just one cog. You know, I don't do all the other cogs. When people ask about nutrition, I can give them, you know, the little bits that I know, but I would refer them to someone else. And the mental aspect as well. People have asked me to be the therapist, and I don't really want to do that. <laughs> That's hard work, I tell you. <laughs> uh, it's, it's, uh, it's a downer for me. I don't want to do that. It's hard enough just it's hard enough just giving them hope the way I do it. I can't, you know, I can't do all that. Okay. All right. Sounds good. Well, I, I, I myself in my lane. You know what? Yeah, we have to stay within our scope, don't we? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Well, I I think we we kind of I didn't we kind of touched on everything. I think uh, yes. you're just fabulous the way you lay it all out there, and you just give you. the information very succinctly and clearly. So you've addressed everything I wrote down that I wanted to talk about. I try to, I t and I try to make things um, easy to understand, you know, like the rock in the shoe. Everyone can understand that because we've all been through it, you know, just yes. simplify things. You don't have to talk. I mean, I could talk super scientific, but what's the point? Most people aren't going to understand that. Yeah, I'd glaze over too, so. <laughs> okay, well, thank you so much for the information. Now, is there... Can you narrow this down to one nugget or the one thing you want people to to understand about chronic pain and motion? I think, kind of like what we talked about, that you don't have to be in pain. And I have worked with people that couldn't get out of their boat. I've worked with people that couldn't get out of bed. I worked on a guy that was in the ICU and they couldn't give him medication, so I went and worked on it so it would relieve his back pain so they could do brain surgery. So mm. just if people know that they can, you can get up and down off the floor. You can go for a walk without pain. You can achieve your goals, whatever those are. You still have all the muscles. We just got to get everything moving and lined up and working the right way. Okay. Eight, eight weeks. Eight weeks. Wow, that's fascinating. And I can see why your patients thank you for restoring hope. Well, thank you. Because that was a very hopeful statement you just made that you still can live pain free. Yes. Okay. Uh, I'm an optimist. I will always believe it. I don't allow my patients to say if I get well, it's always when I get well. Okay. Well, thank you for your work and, and everything you're doing to con tribute to the best of humanity and how, how can anyone reach you or um, check out Titus Motion Therapy? You can how, go how can they, contact Titus, you? they can go to titusmotiontherapy.com and they can always just feel free to call me. I have my cell phone, home phone, every phone, 310-753-2011. I will okay. call back anyone, anytime. Oh, that's amazing. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay. I appreciate your time. I really do. And have fun on your boat. I will. Have a blessed day. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you again for tuning in to The Glenn Alex Show. Please like, subscribe, and share. Be a precious spirit with a nourishing thought. Please allow me to leave you with this nourishing thought. 
Bob Marley said, you never know how strong you are until being strong is the only choice you have. Chronic pain can be debilitating. The daily barrage of aching, burning, stinging, and stabbing sensations can seriously hinder work, focus, sleep, and relationships. Chronic pain affects the whole person. Whether your chronic pain is from cancer, injury, poor posture, or something else, you show a tremendous amount of inner strength enduring the pain on a daily basis. So I strongly encourage you to incorporate your inner strength in your healing process. Be proactive with your provider, whether it's a pain management specialist, your medical doctor, or whatever healthcare provider you look to for help. Be proactive in addressing your uniqueness and your specific needs. There is no one size fits all treatment for chronic pain. So invest in yourself, use your inner strength and be proactive. Research all available options to find the one that's the best fit for you. For more information on chronic pain, read my blog on glennalex.com. And please remember to like, subscribe, and share. And until next time, be well.